Lesson 2 The Main Menu Hello fellow game designers, welcome to the Wicked Cat Unity Introduction course. Today we are going to continue to explore the Unity menu bar, with a special focus on the project settings, under the Edit menu. On the last video we took a closer look at the input, the tags and layers, the audio, the time, and the player. Join us as we explain the remaining functionalities of the project settings. Step 3 the project settings. The next option of the project settings that we are going to explore are the physics. Once you click there, Unity will open the physics manager on the inspector tab. As you can see, the first property is gravity. This parameter lets you decide the amount of gravity applied to all rigid bodies. The gravity has a negative value on y-axis since is a force that is pulling all objects down. You can reverse the gravity by making the value positive, or even change the axis of gravity by using values different from zero on the other axis. Keep in mind that the default value on the editor allows you to have gravity in your game similar to what we have in the real world. The next property is default material. This is the default physics material that will be used if none has been assigned to an individual collider. We will take a closer look on physics materials, colliders and rigid bodies on future videos. Next, we have the bounce threshold. If two objects collide with a velocity inferior to this value, they will not bounce. This value also reduces jitter so it is not recommended to set it to a very low value. Sleep velocity, is the default linear velocity, below which the objects start going to sleep. As you may have guessed, sleep angular velocity is the default angular velocity, below which the objects start going to sleep. The max angular velocity, is the default maximum angular velocity permitted for any rigid bodies. The angular velocity of rigid bodies should stay within the max angular velocity to avoid numerical instability with rotating bodies. This value can be override by scripting. The next property, minimum penetration for penalty, defines how deep in meters two objects are allowed to penetrate, before the collision solver pushes them apart. Higher values on this parameter will make objects penetrate more but will also reduce jitter. The solver iteration count, determines how accurately joints and contacts are resolved. If raycasts hit triggers is enabled, any raycast that intersects with a collider marked as a trigger will return a hit. Finally, on the layer collision matrix, you can define how the layer-based collision detection system will behave. For example, you can ignore raycast with water or enabled it. The next option on the project settings regards the 2D physics. If you are working on a 2D game and you want to change physics properties, this is the right place to do it. As you can see, gravity now only has two axes, the X and the Y. This property works in similar way to the regular physics. The same happens with the default material. However, this time, instead of a physics material, you can add a physics material 2D. The following parameters are exclusive to the 2D physics. Velocity iterations, defines the number of iterations made by the physics engine to resolve velocity effects. Higher numbers result in more accurate physics, but will have a higher cost to the CPU. The position iterations, is the number of iterations made by the physics engine to resolve position changes. In similar way to the velocity interactions, higher numbers result in more accurate physics, but will have a higher cost to the CPU. The following parameter is velocity threshold. Collisions with a relative linear velocity below this threshold will be treated as inelastic. 
Max linear correction is the value used when solving constraints. The max angular correction is used when solving constraints. Both of these parameters help to prevent overshoot. The max translation speed is the maximum linear speed of a rigid body per physics update. The max rotation speed is the maximum angular speed of a rigid body per physics update. Keep in mind that increasing these values can create numerical problems. The next property, Baumgart scale, controls how fast overlaps are resolved. Baumgart time of scale, controls how fast TOI overlaps are resolved. Time to sleep, is the time in seconds that a rigid body must be still before it goes to sleep. If a rigid body linear velocity is above the linear sleep tolerance, it cannot sleep. The same happens with angular sleep tolerance, but regarding the rigid body angular velocity. Finally, we have the ray cast hit trigger and the layer collision matrix. These parameters work in similar way to the ones on the physics manager. The following option on project settings is quality. Clicking here will open the quality settings of your project on the inspector tab. These allows you to define the quality level of your game to the several devices, set rendering and shadow properties, or define LOD levels for your game. On the graphics option, you will find a list of shaders to include in your game. It is important to add shaders used by streamed scenes asset bundles to this list to ensure they can be accessed. Next you have the network option. This will open the network manager on the inspector tab. Here you can adjust the debug level to off, informal, or full. With off selected, only errors will be printed. With informal, significant networking events will be printed. Full will print all networking events. Adjusting the debug level can be enormously helpful in fine-tuning or debugging your game's networking behaviors. The next parameter is CDRIT. This defines the number of times per second that data is sent over the network. The following option on project settings is editor. This will open the editor settings. Here you can set a remote device, it can be an Android or an iOS device, or none. Under version control, you can select which version control system should be used. You can select, hidden meta files, visible meta files, asset server, perforce, or plastic SCM. For web player testing, the editor can pretend that the game is a web player hosted at given URL on host URL. On Asset Serializatio, you can choose how Unity stores scene files. You can choose mixed, force binary, or force test modes. In default behavior mode, you can select 2D or 3D. Finally, on the sprite packer, you can set the mode to disabled, enabled for builds, or always enabled. The last option on the project settings menu is script execution order. Here you can add your scripts to the list and decide their order of execution. Usually the order of execution is arbitrary, but you may have a specific case where you want a script to run before anything else. To do that, click on the plus sign on the end of the list and add it. The script on the top of the list will be the first to be executed. This concludes our study on the project settings. On the next video, we will continue to explore the remaining option of the main menu bar. Please, don't forget to subscribe our channel and leave a like on the video. If you have any doubts or feedback, use the comment section below. We hope you enjoyed the video. Keep doing awesome games, and have a nice day.